Okay, you guys, we have a, a special episode uh, today. This is um, this is Phil Hartman, sort of a looking back, a remembrance, fondly mm -hmm. at the the a, late great a tribute to Phil. Yeah, there you go. Because tribute. on our podcast, we kept hearing all kinds of people mentioning Phil, um, Will Ferrell, Bill Hader. Uh, ad admiring Phil, even trying to be like Phil. So we just thought, let's do a show about Phil's greatness at, on Saturday Night Live. And for that reason, we know there was a tragic tragedy that happened and we steered away from it for the most part because we wanted this to be fun and we let people ramble around. But uh, it was, um, I'll just say from my side of the fence yeah. is um, I'd had dinner with Phil's daughter and her husband, about a year and a half ago, and she expressed kind of wanting to talk about her mom and dad. And um, we went, you know, we told her, do whatever you want. But she did decide to come to the live show mm -hmm. at the Growlings, which you're about to hear. So that was really nice for her to see all that love pouring out for her dad. And um, it was it was emotional, but it also was just a blast to revisit Phil's greatness. And he, he just made me laugh so much. Yeah, and you're going to hear a lot of laughs because it's old uh, writers and uh, mm -hmm. cast members you know. And uh, we went to the Groundlings, went where Phil's from, got on stage and had a great crowd that loved him. And we just all... Where he was, is a Hall of Famer or yeah. maybe the, the goat of the Groundlings. He was there for 11 years. And so we went to the home base of where it all happened. And Julia Sweeney was with us on this particular show. And she got her break on that stage. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of great fun to be had on this episode. It's very interesting and, and lot lots of laughs. Yep. We got Kevin Nealon, we got Jim Downey, uh, Dana, myself, and Julia. Mm -hmm. So hope you like it. Part one. You don't scare me. I got chunks of guys like you in my stool. <laughs> Everybody. What a great montage. Oh, shit. We got the cold side. All that right, was awesome. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. David? Hey, guys. I'll fix this. Give me about 25 minutes. No, but what I happened? I feel like I'm in a witness protection program here with the microphone. Try six. Remember when that submarine Selfie? went down? <laughs> I miss that crazy little sub. How long are you going to work on that microphone? I got attached. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm uh, perfect. This is okay. I got it. I went to DeVry. I'm under a, <laughs> I'm under a vent, and I probably will be for the next. Are um, you under a vent? Are you feeling it? Oh, yeah. It's fucking brutal. I right call now. it a cool breeze to keep us comfortable. Oh, you call geez, it a vent. It's brutal. Who's negative now? <laughs> so, you Ooh. guys... Thanks for coming down. We, uh, we're going to get things going because we have all our friends here. Uh, a couple mm -hmm. of uh, great friends. How long has this show? puppet theater been here? <laughs> it is so quiet. They said it's small. I was here once, but man, it's, it's intimate. Yeah. It's really intimate, isn't it? I thought this was like the I want to see Neil Young here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't laugh, but that's not that great. <laughs> you know, just acoustic. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Introduce our panel. Okay, we're doing this show, and we're going to bring out our guests. Um, in no particular order, I'll just say uh, number one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dating game. Yeah. Uh, please welcome, from Saturday Night Live and everything else, my good friend and David's good friend, Mr. Kevin Nealon. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, nice to see you, brother. Nice to see you. I knew Kevin right when I saw him backstage. I go, I know that. That's Kevin. Is this okay? Yeah. I don't like to sit any closer to you guys. <laughs> yeah, this good. has been pretty distant. Yeah, don't who sit would here, you yo. like to sit next to you? Because that's who I'll introduce next. Sit next to me? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Robbie Margo. Margo, Margo Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> And her twin sister, Robbie Marco. Robbie Marco. No, Robbie Marco is, is a very. I saw good that actor. blank stare. I thought maybe that's not her name. <laughs> well, I was. I saw a movie with Pitt Brad. You ever seen Pitt Brad? Oh, that yeah. guy is a hell of an actor. Old pity, pity they call him. Yeah, a, t a town without pity. <laughs> Let's yeah, get out, yeah. Julia Sweeney. Oh, Julia Sweeney. Yeah. 
Yeah. Look at that. Woo! They are packed in here. Lovely Julia. One, one of your own. own. One of your own. Gr yeah. A groundling. I like when you meet people. Were you a groundling? How many were groundlings? How many not groundlings? Never been a groundling. Mm. Is that anyway. an applause light? Is that an applause light? Applause light? <laughs> oh my God. That green light went on. Oh, it's almost over. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and of course, of course um, uh, an esteemed writer from Saturday Night Live. We'll talk all about that. The one and only, the infamous writer of Saturday Night Live and other things, mm -hmm. Mr. Jim yeah. Downey. Yeah. yeah. Right there, Jimmy. Yeah, buddy. Jim Downey, our boss. Jim Downey with the reed shoes. I just, I just wanted to sing. All right, let's see. Jim Downey at the reed. Do you need through? any help with that? <laughs> no, I won't. You tell me. Oh, that easy, right? Hulk. Can I get a menu? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm problem. Oh. Sorry, but we'd have this problem. worked yes. out. There we go. How's that? That gonna be okay for the next four I and a half hours? Like you would like an adjustment? Why don't we go back? Stay. Oh. <laughs> Can I get a menu? Oh, I mean, you really want an adjustment. No, no. While they're turning this blow I fan off. I just want to be able to see. I was a stand-up for years, and we were, you know how to adjust mics, right, Kevin? Yes. I do, yeah. Mine's perfect. Is that good, too? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Perfect. You're good? You're good? Oh. All right, let's wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> And David Spade. Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome to Fly on the Wall, live yeah. from the infamous Groundlings in Hollywood, yep. California. I'm Dan O'Flarfo. This is David Spudler. <laughs> and we decided to do a tribute to Phil Hartman because we have this podcast that's dedicated to SNL primarily. And everyone kept mentioning Phil's work and his sketches, Will Ferrell and Bill Hader and others. So we thought, let's do an episode devoted to Phil Hartman's greatness, and I guess I'll say genius, as yeah. a sketch player yeah. on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> so we're going to talk about all that in Saturday Night Live. And we'll, we don't have a script, right, David? We're just well, flying it'll free. Well, become very obvious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we do know, uh, we all knew <laughs> Phil pretty well, some better than others. Uh, we could maybe just start with Kevin and we'll just sort of uh, meander and go all over the place. But we will definitely discuss Phil. But Kevin, just come, what comes to mind? Phil oh, Hartman. Man, I, just, I knew I sit in the wrong chair. <laughs> I should have took the first one. Uh, <laughs> Phil Hartman, I remember when we first um, got on Saturday Night Live and we were all kind of getting to know each other, although I knew a few, a few people. And then somebody's talking about the old guy. There was an old guy that's in the cast too. He wasn't around yet, but he was really good. His name's Phil Hartman. And he was 37 <laughs> years old. Gross. <laughs> and we were all like, wow, well, he, he is old. like an adult. Mm -hmm. I got to He's so old. <laughs> he was and, um, and, and so, yeah, he was a lot of fun. We, we, so we got to, uh, <laughs> we, were, we were shooting the titles. And I remember it was late at night. And we're sitting around waiting for the camera set up. And it's Phil, Jan Hooks, and me. And I don't know if this was a sketch he used to do or what, but um, Jan would like feed him lines and say, um, uh, I forget what, what his character's name was, like Mr. Poopy, he was calling him or something. And he was a foreign guy. Uh, and he said, um, Mr. Poopy, can you say, I'm having a good time in Los Angeles. I love, I mean, in uh, New York, I love it here. They better work it out in Los Angeles. Good time. And uh, the way he did it was really funny. You know? No, it was. It was funny. I can't even do a fake uh, foreign guy. Yeah. You know? But um, <laughs> that's one of the things I remember him right off the bat. We'll get back to some other stories a little later. <laughs> this is the Y95. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, Kevin and I came in together with Phil, and we our first show was with Phil. That's yeah. where I know you from. Yeah. <laughs> remember, we shared an office. And remember, you guys it, did. We shared an office, a, a tenth of the size of this stage. Remember when it started snowing? And you, I looked out the window. We were there for so many hours. You're exhausted, and I didn't know about winter really. I mean, like a winter coat. 
Well, and, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I think it was the second year. There's a big tall window in the office on the 17th mm -hmm. floor. Yeah. And can you hear me way in the back? <laughs> and, uh, and um, <laughs> you know, you work so late at night to like, you know, three or whatever in the morning. And after a while, you just run out of ideas. <laughs> I think it was the second year. We're looking out the window and 30 Rock is lit up from below. And you can mm -hmm. see the snow falling down through the window. <laughs> yeah. And we're both standing in front of the window. It was like a New Yorker uh, cartoon. <laughs> and we just both said, we had our chance. We had our chance. And we, to get a winter coat. That yeah. was the first snow. I had my chance. I didn't get it. Yeah. I don't have it. And now I'm right. fucked. I'm yeah. <laughs> Julia? Take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, any re um, re reflections you want to share? Well, I knew Phil before he was on SNL. Whoa. He was actually my intermediate teacher. <laughs> yeah. Lingo. Wow. And Lingo. he was truly one of the best teachers. I think, I mean... Really, at least once a week, I think of something that he said. Like he, there's not that many people who are really funny and know why they're really funny. They know they can explain it to you. It seems mm -hmm. like, don't you think in comedy, yeah. some people are just instinctively funny and you don't, they don't know why. And some people can't explain what they do, but Phil could. And so he was just such an incredible teacher. But I, I'd taken basic, and then I had I I was asked to repeat it. Whoa. <laughs> That wow. was a great thing. And then, so I had taken basic twice and then I got Phil for intermediate. And um, I still think, because we, they were teaching the classes up at that church on Highland and Franklin. Yeah, then. Scientology. And that's yeah. where I took the class with Phil. And I just loved him immediately. And I knew him from the Pee Wee Herman show. And I, he was, of course, I knew him from go, coming to the Groundlings. So I was a huge fan of his. And he changed my life, really. Like, he... He he could explain. I remember he, you know, he had exercises. He talked about taking like uh, we had to do like a Warner Brothers cartoon character and mash it with a family member we know intimately and come up with a character that's just half of each thing. Like how just how to do it. Like he just told you how to do it. And he had a great laugh and he was so supportive of everyone. And um, and then after that, we became friends and we hung out a lot and we became really just friends on our own. And then I was, and it was very exciting to know him. And then when he got on SNL, it was such a big deal. It was so exciting. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and then sure. when I got on SNL, I really felt like I had a big brother at the show. Like it was just so great to have him there. And he would bring me in his office and kind of explain the things that were happening at SNL. Like I felt like I had somebody had my back. It was mm -hmm. great. Wow, what wonder. Well, nice. It was it was Lorraine Newman as far as the groundling going to SNL and then yeah. then it was John Lovitz. John Lovitz. And then it was Phil. Hello. Yeah. And maybe you were the fourth. <laughs> Hello. Was I the fourth? I guess maybe Maybe not. There's I'm not a sure. Lot, I think. Also, yeah. Phil was great at teaching the host how to read the cue cards. Oh yes, he was. Without he making was it look best. like uh, yes. you're looking at the cue card. The, yeah. the gold standard of Yeah, cue card he really reading. knew how to cheat well, you know. <laughs> And, uh, and also, because uh, I forgot to tell you this, I don't know if it'll ever come back to me. So, um, <laughs> so you're just you taking have the all the time in the world. Yeah. So um, Phil's office was next to ours. Close, anyway. And I would go in there. <laughs> On the same floor. Same this floor. is back in the night. I can't same remember. Floor. It was back in the 1900s. So I would go over to uh, Phil. Every time I went over to Phil's office, it seemed like he had a different hobby he was doing. You know, he'd either be painting one week, he had the easel in there and books on how to paint and different, uh, you know, uh, paints. And, and then the next week I go in there, he's learning how to play the blues guitar. Paints were gone. The paints were gone. And then the next week he's sailing. And then next week he's flying an airplane. Yeah. But he did all those things he, well. He was I really know. an artist. I know. I know. He, he did, did album covers. He did America's album yes. cover. He, you know, and he, was, Mrs. Nash. he was the only, I think I have this right. And I'm sure you guys will correct me if I don't. He was the only cast member who got a writing credit yeah right mm -hmm. and it was because he had actually come to the show as a guest writer the season before you guys joined oh, I didn't when know that. paul rubens yeah. paul know rubens that. hosted the show mm -hmm. and um and he came with paul and and um and then and john john and, and phil were friends from the groundlings and, and and was pushing him but but he suddenly i remember, remember it wasn't. It, it was kind of amusing to us that um, that sometimes the, the cast would kind of notice the fact that they were doing a, an awful lot of writing. In some cases, more than Phil, but he was getting a writing credit. Yeah. None of them were, 
and and it, and Phil did have a really full life with all these hobbies and interests. He loved, he loved to surf. He was a big surfer and mm -hmm. and uh, Scuba a diver skier. Yeah. yeah, and like kind of like you know sports. You wouldn't necessarily size him up and and read him for like an adventure guy, you know. But he um, <laughs> Conan Conan used to tell me that Phil would call him up like uh, on a Tuesday. Go, hey Conan, let's go. Let's, you want to go skiing up in Stratton? It's like. Uh, <laughs> Phil, we have a show this week. It's like, well, well, I'll have you back by read through. <laughs> it's like, but, but we have to write the show. That I mean, that's what read through is. It's the reading of the pieces that the writers write. <laughs> you should know this. You're a writer, you know. And it's oh, come on, come on. It's one week, and <laughs> you guys like. I'm sorry. It, it why is it funny to me? But um, it is the, funny. It, it is you guys funny. wrote an awful lot of stuff. Didn't get a writing yeah, credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Phil. Yes. But I Phil, was one of the people who complained, by yeah. the way. So, but, but And I think Phil, they said just Phil gets that. Well, I did get a writer's credit, Jim. My first year there. Because you came on as a writer feature. You came, that's oh. right. But yeah, when exactly. you, once you were promoted to So then cast, I was given the opportunity. Promoted. Well, it was like, well, yeah, welcome to your smaller Let's, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a very brief story for the next 45 minutes. I had a um, <laughs> no at the second uh, season. Lauren said um, we could either make you a cast member or you could say feature and keep your writing credit. Oh. I said, well, I guess you know what I got to do. <laughs> so I took the cast member, and I, I yeah, and I we all kept writing, and none of us got credit because Lauren said uh, we're about you know getting paid. These the writers got paid more, right, Jim? Uh, yeah. than the actors. Yes, yes the writers. Yes, we could go, say, yes, we could go make true. money no. outside the show. Yeah. Yeah. But, you don't yeah. need but, it because you by the, go, And yeah. by the way, it, I mean, it is to the advantage of performers to write for themselves. It is. Right? I mean, yeah. you get And the writers. <laughs> but, but well, Jim. wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you hit me there. But, Jim. But Jim. I love how this just devolved into us arguing about yeah. this. So wait a minute, Julia, you... Julia, you, you wrote on the show. Said. I'm only hearing this now. You wrote all your stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Lauren, Lauren said the writers aren't going to go on and make a lot of money like we are. So cut to Conan O'Brien, <laughs> Greg Daniels, Dave Mandel. Yes, exactly. you know. Yeah. By the way, Phil would have loved this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> he would no have been all have over it. Harder. But but yeah, it 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 was true that that the the feeling was um that that cast members a it was to their advantage to write for themselves if it, it helped help them you mm -hmm. know their image and b they were yeah. going to make money in movies yeah. and so on that in a ways that writers can't well, jim's jim's sure. the uh, he was the he was the jim boss. was a head writer yeah, when he, i was there yeah. and um he was making three hundred twenty five thousand a week or, <laughs> I, I mean, I got that wrong. I yeah. don't. No, I think what happens, Julia, is when you and Kevin and Dana, we um, we would lose the writing credit, me cast, and then you thought you'd get this cavalcade of sketches written for you, and then you go, wait, right? <laughs> so I exactly. still, have, I guess I still have to write because no one is writing well, for the, me, the, and that's that's the way it always is. I guess. So anyway, but getting I'm back sorry, to Phil. Anyway, the audience no, loves not this yet. conversation. Not yet. <laughs> Wait, the, uh, the other half of that, though, is yeah. it's not just that Phil was the only one who got a writing credit <laughs> yeah. and hence the salary, and like mm -hmm. an Emmy or something. And at his own office. It, but, yes. But by it wasn't even <laughs> close in terms of who, which cast member did the writers write for. Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Phil yeah, by writing yeah, yeah. for him. Yeah. He was and like so, the writer and the star okay. and all the writers from first. This is it turning against fair. Phil. It wasn't. <laughs> this is an unexpected turn. We'll be back. We'll be back while we reset the stage yeah. with our, our backup yeah. guests. We'll be out in a moment. Can we just, on the writing thing? I'm we, trying to, to diffuse I, it. I got something I got to say. Think, I just want to say this: what, what Kevin and I did, Hans and Franz, or stuff that you yes, put out there. Yes, love those guys. Yeah. Do, do you remember? <laughs> Anybody remember? You, you guys remember that? Uh, Jim was in a perfect example of the cast writing, and then Jim became a fan of the sketch along with Robert Smigel and was a big contributor. But you know, we designed the template. <laughs> 
<laughs> and yeah, Phil played the but, funniest uh, role in those characters, Helmut. Well, Hans and Franz were like these idiotic bullies and uh, egomaniacs, paranoid schizophrenics. I remember. And they... <laughs> <laughs> Phil came on as the browbeaten um, helmet, this very sad sack uh, with a droopy prosthetic to you know, make him look really pathetic. And that was the brilliant thing about Phil. He could come on and almost be like a silent clown in this, you know, very contained. And a lot, there was a lot of melancholy around Hello, him. Hello, I am Helmut. I am Helmut. I am Helmut. And how am I turn around so we can see your buttocks? Yeah. You're lucky we don't have a campfire here. Your buttocks are like marshmallows. <laughs> if you took your belt off, you cause a flabalanche. <laughs> I could flick you with my little finger and you would fly across the room and land in your own baby poop. <laughs> this is the sophistication of the writing. This, that was Jim Downey's line, I gotta say. Jim's like, how did you not get money for writing that stuff? <laughs> 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 it was also his was the perfect embodiment of Pumpitude. Jim, do you yes. remember that? I, I guess so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of, lot of water over the dam, but yeah. Jim, no, when, when you, were, that was funny shit, man. That, that was the kind of thing where, you, I mean, you guys walked in with that, and, and Smigel and I both really uh, responded to that. And uh, so we would, you know, occasionally, you know, yeah, oh, how yeah. about throw that you a great. line or something? Yeah. But, that's uh, the best. That's when the show really is working. When that, but, no, but that that is, I mean, you know, the writers. The, it's a really a performer show. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily know it from the credit system, but <laughs> uh, it is. The performers are the leading edge of that show, and and the, a performer, you know, can lift a mediocre script. Um, you know, a, a, a great script can't necessarily work. If the if the performer doesn't have something, you know, but um, the the um, and anyway, we're on strike now, so we're not. <laughs> Is it illegal what we're doing right now? Yeah. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> no, that did cross my mind. By the way, am I? Uh, is this? I, if, if the, was Fran Dressler? Oh, yeah. Was she a groundling? Or <laughs> what if she's in the audience in a in a mask? So anyway, <laughs> Phil. So, Phil, no, uh, I have a question, Downey, and you don't have to answer anything else. I have else. a Fran Drescher, a very funny Fran Drescher story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm all ears. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it, it might, if, you have to know Al Franken, but it was Man. a dinner. Dana, it's Al. Al had, had, had wanted to be very badly to take over Update, and this was at the time when, when, um, um, the, when in fact, was Norm McDonald Norm, Norm ended McDonald, up taking yeah. over. Right. And so, and, and Al was like really making his case as Al mm. would, would do, you know, relentlessly over a long period of time and talking to <laughs> lots of people. And so finally, um, <laughs> Lauren said, um, well, if it's not going to be Al, we need to tell him. And, and so we, 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 it was one of these you know, uh, posh Italian restaurants. And so, and it was me, Lauren, and Al, and we got to dinner, and we finally get around to the. Oh. It's like, so what? What is it? What's it gonna be? And it's like, um, and it's like, um, Al, we we um, Jim Jim was thinking, <laughs> it's not, you know, that kind of thing. And so we had just gotten done telling to Al. It's it's the feeling is that it would be with you. It, it would be good and certainly it was certainly would have an attitude it would have a you know a, a, a political edge that but maybe we want it we want it to be uh not partisan just sillier and and i was like wow and he was al was very upset and he just started to vent and fran drescher who had been at the next table was like hi <laughs> And it was just, it's a lawn. And I, I don't do the Fran Drescher voice, obviously. <laughs> but it was just, she, I mean, I think she's great and funny thing, but it was just the worst timing. <laughs> <laughs> it just stepped right on Al's uh, plaintiff thing. But um, I'm sorry, I just sparked to that when you. Uh, you told me two things earlier. We, a little birdie told me uh, um, two things about Phil and Saturday Night Live. One was, you know, one, one was, I'm certain this is true, uh, of that. Phil was probably in more pieces than any cast member in history, especially 
now that the casts are so huge. Yeah. I mean, when you guys were there, mm -hmm. it was, it was yeah. more like eight, eight. nine people. What kind of maybe? money is the cast making now? <laughs> a lot of money. We don't want to go there credits again. Credits and everything. <laughs> no, the, the uh, <laughs> Phil, Phil was in, would, would be in so many pieces yeah. um, that, that our running order would be determined by his wigging requirements. <laughs> right. So that after you guys, after we'd had that lap, we, the, the way the show works is on, on the last rehearsal, the studio breaks at 11 o'clock on Friday night. And, and uh, I, would, I would be up there in Lauren's office with Lauren and, and mainly the heads of the departments like the set and, and costume departments and, and, and making sure you know, ha hammering out a running order for a dress, deciding which sketches would go where in the order. And and based the way it worked was we would would have our, our ideal order based on the comedy and the flow. And let's, you know, this is a big full casting open with that. And then we, you know, this is a, a, a smaller piece that that'll be a nice segue. And then we need film here to transition something. And um, the way it works is, is, you know, it's like a Swiss army knife where we, we have to, if we're producing like 13 pieces in this fairly tiny space, um, the sets, the same space has to serve as the, as the base for like three sketches in the course of night. So the, mm -hmm. the sets have to be assembled, taken down, a new set brought in, and something has to be entertaining the audience while this is going on. So you have film and other, you can't do it during a sketch anyway. It, it, no one ever envisaged, envisaged uh, a, a problem where it would be a performer. Like, the, amazingly, they found a way to, you know, to build like a Roman Colosseum piece during <laughs> a film, little two-minute film, and then remove it and turn it into like a, uh, you know, modern restaurant. But the problem is like, can, can you get from like Roman Colosseum to, you know, Orso or something? Yeah, we can, but uh, wardrobe has the has the problem, and it was Phil's hair because <laughs> Phil was in every piece, and so if it was like a bald pate, um, you know, the toes take time to to get on if he's if if he's going to be bald, mm -hmm. and and so we finally got to the point where. Just put him in a fucking bald pate and put wigs on him all every night. night yeah. So right. so oh, yeah. a lot of times he but. But what we used to, um, he literally, we could, like, we'd have a running order there, perfect. And then Tom Broker, who was one of the costume people, would go, um, now I've got a film problem going from <laughs> that to that. And it was only because he was in every yeah. fucking piece. And he was yeah. so organized. I remember him bringing yeah, me in. Very... Like, he had this binder. He had, yes. yeah. he had things for oh, every God. sketch. Like, and, there, you know, the actors weren't that organized. Well, you weren't, if you weren't in... As many sketches as he was in, but he would have he'd be like in eight sketches in a show, like routinely. I, I'm trying to remember if he ever had a one. light show and and, yeah. and cast members. That was a thing that we we kept from you people to the extent we could. But <laughs> but sometimes Lauren would, Lauren would go, um, you know, Kevin's really light in the show. Does, does any you know anyone have? And and often. <laughs> No, I'm saying, for example, sure. it could have been Dana. Um, that was my choice, by the way. it wasn't Dana very often. <laughs> but, no, but, but, but I mean, you know, and it would just be, it was the luck of the draw, except in, in the case of Phil, it just never, he never seemed to have, and I don't, I don't remember, although an interesting fun fact about Phil is that he never appeared even one time on Update. Really, uh, he was the only cast member who never did. Uh, he managed to get through however many seasons he did. They what, couldn't like, get the wig on him in time. He couldn't do it, <laughs> and and he finally did when he came back to host the show after he he right. he left. He came back and, and he did Frankenstein on update. This oh, might be yeah. a good time to look at something for fun. You want to see yeah. We have a little clip of Phil as Frankenstein. It was Frankenstein. I'm going to Peter. Jim wrote that, didn't you? It was Tarzan. Kevin played Tarzan. With Jack Handy and I would write those. Jack Handy. And Tonto was John Lovitz. And yeah, I, it, for, the was idea was it wasn't, the idea was it started with we were going to do a piece 
uh, about cavemen Christmas caroling. And, and it was the idea of cavemen dropping out the, I guess it's the indefinite article. So the and 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 stuff. So away in manger, no crib for bed. You know, that, that was the way they would sing. And then, then it became like um, Tarz, Tarzan. The thing with Tarzan was Tarzan, you know, Tarzan would, would, would speak like that with that kind of diction, but then suddenly throw like some highfalutin, you know, word at you like Tarzan see white hunter come on escarpment, <laughs> you know, and it's like, what? And, and uh, so we had, you know, Tarzan was the same kind of idea. And then, uh, and Tonto, you know, <laughs> so anyway, it was just the people who talked. Anyway, we have like a 45 second clip. No, no that's good. <laughs> we do have a short clip. Excuse me, Miss Palmer. Frankenstein, not understand the question. Oh, I'm sorry. The INF Treaty, it outlaws uh, medium brain nu nuclear, excuse me, nuclear missiles. Uh, at least that in the European theater. <laughs> 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 Kevin. Sassy. <laughs> so that was. I, I couldn't see that, but was that where the set literally yeah, started? Yeah, and then yeah. Phil lost it. He came crawling and out. He never he, did that. He never he that broke. Was the only time yeah. he was that was the only time he broke, and he broke hard. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, did you see like, his uh, audition, uh, Phil? Well, you you probably watch yeah, all of there, our yeah. auditions, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was our. You're boss. all. Do you great. still look at him? Yeah. I don't regret <laughs> any of the choices we made. <laughs> <laughs> want you to know that. Thanks, Dad. And Phil, you. <laughs> so what happens is you guys usually you and Lauren every, they hear about someone to to get as far as an audition, it takes a lot, right? So they're already probably pretty good just to get in front of you guys. So by the time you see Phil, you've heard a lot. He was. Was he hired before Kevin and Dana? No, we all came same time. at the same time. Oh, you we were right, all man. on the same show. You're not paying attention, man. I was. <laughs> I drifted off in the middle. Uh, he, so, might, he might have technically been in the discussion just because of the Paul. He had been at the show the oh, year right, before. Oh, right, right, right. And, and John Lovitz was was. But John was had to talk him into it. He he didn't want to. He, I didn't know that. No. Really, he didn't want to what? Be a cast member. I mean, when I met him, he was supposedly a writer, and and John kept That's going. Right. That's He's right. the funniest. He's the greatest. You've got to hire him. You know, <laughs> and John was really new. He'd seen him here. You know. Well, they yeah. worked together. They here. worked together. Here. Yeah, yeah. They did pieces, they, didn't they? Yeah. 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 So Julie, did did Phil recommend you? Was that any, or did you just? I don't think so. I mean, did you audition right here? Yeah, I auditioned here. Like where physically? Right I, I like the time machine. <laughs> like no around movie. this whole area. Like right, like right there. Here. Wow. Was I here? Was I right here? <laughs> <laughs> you were right there cheering me on. I remember it was between me and Lisa Kudrow, and when I got it, I oh, thought, I really hope that Lisa has a career. <laughs> <laughs> because she deserves something. She's something. so good. <laughs> Scraps. It just shows you. You never know you never in know. show business. You never Only. know. But you came on. Did you bring in your bag of tricks? It's Pat. Did you have that yes. developed yeah. here? I, I had done it here, but I'd only I had this character that I'd done many times here called Mia Culpa, <laughs> and I thought that yeah. was going to be my big, you know, character. And <laughs> well, I, and the, but then Pat, I'd only done one sketch here as Pat. What was Mia Culpa like? It what? was just a character. She well, apologized can you give it for ten everything. seconds. <laughs> No, I, I, she's a, an apologist. I mean, I talk like this, and she just said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so sorry, I'm sorry. For it. Anyway, anyway, oh, yes. <laughs> but anyway, that's me. And I'd done a play, yeah, and I'd I won off. best play of the LA Weekly. Like, I thought, okay, I have that's my all. character, and I could not get this character on. In fact, Al Franken said he thinks I... I did more sketches trying to get that character on than any other person he'd ever seen. I think I tried to get on 15 sketches as Mia Culpa. And then huh. I thought, you know what? They don't like this character. Yeah. And, 
How did, did it you... get to dress or you just did it at read through? Did it ever get to dress or? No, it... no. Okay. Just never... read through. No, just read through. <laughs> but then Al put it in his movie in um, Stuart Saves His Family. He had me play that character. So you were good As a enough, compensation. So I finally enough. got to do it. All right. Um, but no, I'd only done Pat. Yeah. I had done Pat here as a down left. But um, how did you come up with the name Mia Culpa? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just in a Just common what about Dana, Dana, Culpa. Jim, Julia, <laughs> Kevin. Um, no. No, you I know our names. I'm saying we should add name I was going to say, I remember, what we don't talk about a lot is the commercial parodies. And some of my favorite ones were <laughs> Cole and Blow. Cole and Blow. And that yeah. was pure, that was, Phil was the star of that one. He did my first thing I ever wrote was Chia Head. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Kevin, were you in that? I think you were in that. Yeah. And, Chia Head. Uh, Chris Rock. Were you in that, uh, Julia? <laughs> think she had? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, she had, I think Chris Rock was. And I and Phil did that. And then um, I think he did uh, Salon. There's a couple more. So I remember. Change his, Bank. Oh, it may, did he do Change Bank? You well, did Change Bank. Jim yeah. was the announcer for Change Bank. That's was, like when you tell Reggie Jackson he had three home runs. Jim goes like this. Oh, yeah, I remember Change Bank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was your. How would you describe Change Bank? Yeah. It was a very quiet digression, a bank, a commercial for it a was, bank. It was just a guy, <laughs> a guy, a not, not very mediagenic guy, <laughs> way too excited about something that he was the most excited person about. And it was explaining something at great length that everyone gets instantly <laughs> without the explanation. And that's just something that always made me laugh as a writer, just like, um, you know, no, you don't understand. It'll be great because, um, you know, like, like uh, I remember wrote a, wrote a, uh, wrote a piece one time about um, uh, the, the female owner, Joan Crock, who was like, uh, it was, it, she owned the, who she owned the Padres? Oh, Ray Is Crock's that, widow? Somebody, yeah. anyway, but anyway, she was giving it a, a, a <laughs> She was I'm giving guessing. a, a yeah, pep talk to the team, yeah. to the baseball team, and saying, and, and you hitters, tonight, hit a home run. Hit a home run. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because um, when you hit a home run, you get to run around all of the bases. <laughs> true, true. You know, and so, and, and you know, the, I don't know. I was just, but Change Bank is like that. that and you were really doing Change Bank for us. Yeah, yeah. Well, change, change, bank, bank. change bank, change bank, change bank, change bank. But they don't know I the don't. idea is people bring change in. <laughs> the I mean, bank would make you change. A bank, a bank. No, it's the only it. thing this bank did was to actually make change. <laughs> and so it was and just a guy. Explain it. And, or, and I, it's funny. Well, I wrote it in, for Kevin. I wrote the part with Kevin playing it. And I remember, and maybe you forgot. Because I was light in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Okay, I was, uh, we're gonna be, we'll be right back. <clears throat> the plan. Oh, what else? But, but I. But Kevin, I remember. I remember. The, um, I. I was getting very noty with the performance thing, and and you were the one who suggested that I do it instead. <laughs> <laughs> and I. Wow. And, I, it down. and then it became I, much lighter in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Just making yourself even lighter. Well. Um, but no, but I mean, it, it, it was, I remember you saying, Jim, no hard feelings. You seem to, you have very specific ideas about this. And I mean, you could do it. Why, why don't you do it? And, and I, was, I was sort of <laughs> was thinking. Like, why don't you just do it? <laughs> it wasn't that, it wasn't that tone at all. But, all but. Right. Um, no, I'm do, not do mad. A I'm bit not of mad. A, do a little bit of it. Yes, yeah, so show us how great it well, is. Well, I mean. I, is a... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, by the way, it was like 30 was in 1988, so 12 plus, it's 35 years ago. That's a long oh, ass time ago. Easy, easy. But it was- um, <laughs> Maybe we don't have to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, when, no, no. When oh Frank would do your cold open. Jim, let me hear it. I'm this close to doing it if you don't do it. <laughs> it's just like, if you want change well, for just, a dollar, we can just do 10 dollars. It opens with a graphic yeah. like, um, at, first, at First Citywide Change Bank, we do one thing. We make change. And it's like, um, you, can, you can bring us in a $10 bill, a $5 bill, and we will give you change. You can bring it a $5 bill, we'll give you five singles, uh, 25 qu uh, 20 quarters, uh, 50 dimes, you know, and I'm explaining. And many people don't realize the, the sheer variety of change combinations that are available. And, and, 
it was that was just it was just an excitable guy talking yeah. about. It. All right, we have a clip of Change Bank. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I thought we did. Oh, they're disappointed. Okay. Did he do the car you can fuck? Was that one? The car you can fuck? Is that one? Who is that? That that sounds like something we did, but I don't. I thought that was. <laughs> sounds like I know a we did. Bon, Bonnie and Terry Turner wrote a really funny piece. It was about a car. Uh, it was called the Chameleon. Yeah. And it was a luxury car that no one would steal. Because it was like inside, it's like, you know, plush leather and, and just the finest, you know, mahogany glove box and, and all yeah. this stuff. Super, super. But the exterior was rust and Bondo. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it was just designed to look like, like a, get a piece of crap yeah, yeah. that wouldn't get stolen. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. All right. Well, here's some Phil. And Phil was in that. Yeah. He was in everything. Yeah. Just say Phil he was. was in- Loaded, and he was always great. What okay, well, um, we have a lot of clips. Uh, do you want? Uh, okay, David, you can decide. You, can you read those? I don't want it to be a sketch mm-hmm. what he did with me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, oh yeah, why church chat. Why don't you do? Uh, well, do uh, show the rest of that Frank Sinatra we showed earlier. That was a big one. Oh, Fred, okay. The Sinatra group. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk yeah. about that for a sec. Um, we done McLaughlin group on the show, and then the idea was to have and Bonnie and Terry had done a Frank Sinatra sketch with Phil, who did a great Frank Sinatra, and then the inspiration. I don't know if you, you I mean, know, it was Robert, Robert it Smigel, from. probably. Yeah. So it's if you haven't seen it, it's Frank Sinatra has a kind of a, a news talk show, and he's very critical of everybody. That's all you really have. He to hates know. his guests. It's Phil in all his glory. <laughs> In this yeah. particular Billy sketch. Billy Idol is played by Sting. I think it was Sting. Yeah, that's right. Sting hosted. Jan Hooks was Sinead O'Connor. And we had uh, Mike Myers and, and oh, Vicky Stephen as, as Stephen Eady. Yeah. And yeah. Chris Rock was Luther Campbell. Was I was not yeah. in that sketch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, yeah. let's look at let's it. Look at it. <laughs> let's go to a clip. We'll figure it out. Stupid. I'm like a bloody stupid old fart. You're all talk, Blondie. You want a piece of me? I'm right here. Don't provoke me, old man. You don't scare me. I got chunks of guys like you in my stool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That was, it was the same clip from before. I think there's a, I think there's a legal then, reason uh, they're so short. Uh, well, let's see if we can get lucky with the next one. Uh, Mm-hmm. Phil, Kevin, do you want to look at the ears? Yeah, just hold it up. Just hold it up over there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Kevin, we don't have a clip, but you did Siskel and Ebert. I saw what? that on, on uh, what oh, that was one to, of my favorites. Uh, was that funny? What was that one? <laughs> what happened about? to Johnny Carson oh. and McMahon? That's Johnny really Carson and McMahon. That's a closer. That. that feels like a closer. Okay. All right. You're right. A closer? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, we, we should take them when we can. <laughs> Johnny Mastermind. Carson, me doing that with Phil Hartman was one of my favorite. Things. Yeah, how about Reagan? Reagan Mastermind. Reagan Mastermind. Reagan Mastermind. Yeah, that was that was written by virtually the entire writing staff. This Ronald was Reagan. should we? This was Phil Hartman playing Ronald Reagan, the doddering fool, and then the guests would leave, and then he would switch the whole war room out, and he'd speak ten languages, and he became yeah. incredibly sharp. And so it was, was a tour de force it, yeah. for, for Phil. Always faking being dumb, and then when the doors closed, he'd be smart. I remember, yeah. I think I saw that before I came on the show. Yeah, that was before mm-hmm. I saw it. Thought- Should we look at it? Yes, let's look at it! The big countries are the countries we sell arms to. The big countries are the countries where we wash our money. The blue countries, yes, excuse me, Mr. President, sir. Yes, it's your 1130 photo opportunity, the little girl who sold the most Girl Scout cookies. Damn! <laughs> okay, let's get it over with. Everybody out. God, move, move. Well, he says, you're yeah, that good at sales, lady. Maybe I could use you up on Capitol Hill. <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you. Come on, Lisa. Come on. Damn <laughs> <laughs> when did you phase Dennis out of sketches, Jim? <laughs> Dennis was pretty was cool Den- with his haircut. I thought that was you at first. 
Uh, we were, yeah, we were interchangeable. Can I say Dennis, Dennis had my was... hair slick back in a pompadour on that it's a piece of tape, okay? He was uh, asking some impertinent questions about a writer's credit. And we decided <laughs> to make an example. Of... No. Dennis. Wait, Kevin was telling us about Siskel and Ebert. We don't have a clip, but what, what was that one? I, it was not my favorite. I'll tell you that. I, was not, I know that you brought that up. I, I even forgot I was in. I uh, thought who you did said I play? you liked it. No, I never liked that. Oh, really? Oh, maybe I did. What was it about? <laughs> <laughs> it's been 35 years. We, we didn't years. do a Cisco and Ebert sketch, did we? Is this the sh- are these the I... people we're talking about? Yeah. No, <laughs> wait, wait, Kevin review. and... Uh, Here's a little known fact, a little Phil trivia. did a Cisco and Ebert sketch. We you did? must have been there. Uh, later. Mm-hmm. I would have been there, but I don't remember. You would have been there during that, right? Okay, yeah. start, stop what arguing, the Hartman, man. Um, Lovett sketches. Yeah, Love let's it. do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do the ones where... Lovett sees the groundling, too. Come on. Oh, yeah. John... Where is, where is Lovett? Why isn't he here? Why isn't he here? John yeah. would be too emotional. He he's said... Yeah, he was too I talked emotional. to him today for yeah. an hour, and I heard... We him. talked to him yesterday uh, yeah. on, in person at my house and, and about all this, and then he said he was too scared to... Uh, Come, he would break down. Oh, yeah. He's a, n- too emotional, but he was, he and Phil were, when I first got on the show, I didn't really know him that well. We're just hanging out at Lauren's house and they always talked as gangsters to each other. What's up? Right. You know, hey, I love that. Yeah. And Dinah Minot, the producer, said, Is that all they do? Have you seen him do, have you seen him do anything else? He goes, All day long. We want a sandwich? Sure, boss. Right over here, you know. <laughs> so then they wrote this sketch where it, I, I, I kind of well, wish we showed these whole sketches. The they're so they, they do it here. Yeah, oh. yeah. Where John is the movie studio head and Phil is the washed up yeah. actor. And there's a, here's a short from video. the 40s or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're in that whole mode. Yeah. <laughs> we have made too many of these war movies. <laughs> Maybe I should take a rest, huh, Harry? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Johnny. I think you should take a rest too. A permanent one. What do you mean? I'm letting you go. You mean? Yes, your contract isn't being renewed. But Harry, I finished, Johnny. Don't mix words. I think it's stinks. <laughs> Listen, Harry, if you're unhappy with my work, tell me now. You're through. You hear me through. You'll never work in this town again. Don't let me hang in my thread. Look at the words. <laughs> <laughs> I think of the worst actor I've ever seen. And I have five hundred dollars a day. Tell me the same. What's the word on the street? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they had a, quite a rep up haul. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of people ask me how I got on Saturday Night Live. And actually, they phrase it more like this. How did you get on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, it's but like, that was you it. were on Saturday Night Live? I was more confused than spade getting on there i mean i i had nothing i had not one character it's true uh nothing going on for myself well what about and i didn't realize it was the height subliminal man which you yeah that i had killed going. on Can the you bars <laughs> subliminal man could you do a little bit of that because that was that was on the first show and it killed you did it on update oh you yeah. did the first show yeah it was yeah. me and victoria jackson and john lovitz Hi. and i was uh it was a advertising uh company and i remember uh this is my first sketch I've ever done. And it's a little difficult because you have like two conversations going on and uh, you really couldn't go off the cue cards because it was kind of rapid um, uh, dialogue. And I'm standing there waiting to go on, first time ever. And Lauren comes up alongside of me and he puts his hand on my shoulder, like 10 seconds away. He goes, are you sure this is what you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's very, a great one. Very Lauren. It's a great yeah. Lauren. He loved to scare us, but it was hysterical in retrospect. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be really like really nice if this was like funny, you know. Right? <laughs> I mean, that yeah. was that was Lauren's. Yeah, that was so him. But that character was basically, you know, he'd be talking about, you know, boy, I'd, uh, uh, you know, I'd love to have dinner with you tonight. Your treat, you know, if you want to. Um, you know, hang out afterwards, your place, and that'd be a lot of fun, you know? So it was always kind of yeah. flipping those words What was words the one where the audience would fill in the blanks? That I never did on that show. I was in the audience at the Tonight Show that when we were living together, and I was one of the people... That was that, Merv Griffin. And you were Merv Griffin. <laughs> oh, was, Jim was Arthur Treacher. Yeah. That was Anyone no, remember? It was, um, <laughs> that, was, that was not SNL. Though. That was a bit for me. That, was, Max, that, that was Carson. TV. You did yeah. on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just like I'd That's be telling a, a story. One. True story. 
And um, I wouldn't ask the audience to um, fill in the word. I would just say, you know, it was uh, it was crazy. I was driving home last night, uh, right out here on uh, Melrose. Melrose, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> and you know, I'm a little tired. I had like one drink, and I get to, you know, it's late at night till my time went. Time was probably like midnight. Midnight, you know, midnight. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm telling you, I, you know, I I've been in this town for a long time, but and I usually carry a little. Uh, Cash. Cash, you know, in my car. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this was a little. This is from the change bank, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, it went on and on like that. <laughs> Kevin, when these two guys were like uh, my favorite stand ups, so when, when I was at the improv, I'd always go watch them, and then, uh, and I always knew Kevin's jokes. But let's remember this is not about me. This, about this isn't about you? <laughs> I thought it switched halfway through. <laughs> I got a text. Uh, the topic is moving tar. No. Julie, do you have a... a oh, Jim Wait, has, Jim has a No, question. I was just thinking of something that actually involves, very much involves Kevin and Phil. To, yeah. I mean, yeah. you, know, you guys... Yeah. Now, you guys um, remember that, that I was pretty contained at the read-through table. Partly, you know, it's my nature. Partly, I... I you know, it's a matter of like, I didn't want to, you know, you know, I, I had to be, you be didn't like laugh a, very a hard. judge. I didn't laugh very hard. Yeah. <laughs> There's one time I absolutely, a couple times at Damon Wayans audition, I, I completely lost my shit. And then at, um, when it was a piece of Kevin wrote, which I hope is well known to the audience. And I hope it's online, but it, the first one was called the hostage and it was Phil plays like this this hopped up um thug in like a, a wife beater t-shirt and his hair greased back and you know, tatted up and everything and kevin is a like a straight laced businessman who's tied up in in this 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 um rat hole apartment and and phil's like um waving this huge fucking gat in his face going like if you're real smart you're gonna play you're gonna play ball and these people are gonna come up with this rats all right because i'm because i'm a mean mean motherfucker i'm a bad at bad apple i'm rotten at the core i'll soon put a bullet in your head look at you and so and so uh and so he's like you know super intimidating and and then kevin and kevin says I, I know I, I'm, they're going to get that ransom. Honestly, hey, what's that over there? And he tries tries to escape. <laughs> Phil instantly instantly stops it, and he goes, "What the hell was that about? What is he trying to do? I just got done telling you I'm a bad bad mother." And then he actually writes, "Sir, I had no business doing that. That was complete. I was in the wrong. You did right. You were in the wrong." You see that? That's a gun. Bang, bang. Will it go through your head? And he goes, and so Kevin pledges and then immediately tries to escape again. So the whole thing was, the whole sketch is Kevin repeatedly tried to escape after Phil threatens him. And then Phil Paul forgiving him. Up. And like giving him another chance. But the topper was at the end where, uh, his name was Mace, by the way, in there. Mace. Yeah, he bad, says, bad, bad, no, I got to go to the bathroom. Hey, you better not leave. While I'm <laughs> so he goes to the bathroom. I got I to hit the head. <laughs> he would shut the door. And... Uh, he had to sit down, you know, and uh, he would, every once in a while, he would, he would push the door open just a little bit to see if I was too, you better not leave. Oh, God, that's a perfect film. Uh, but he was great with that. So that good. mace was uh, great. And then we did another one with Peeping Tom, Ross the Peeping Tom. And he, you better get away from the window. I'm not going to tell you again. <laughs> it's a Jan, Jan Hooks play, was, was a like a prostitute, and Phil has just gotten out. You know, he's just gotten out of like a, a you know a, a three year stretch or something. He's like, oh yeah, little lady, Mace, oh, yeah. Mace is going to take real good care of you. And she's like five minutes. Yeah, whatever, just get it done. And, and like he's like, oh, ba oh, Mace is going to get it done, little girl. He's going to get it done real. Hey, hey, you, and it's Kevin, little Kevin's head in the window. What the hell? What are you doing, you freak? You sick freak? It's okay. Oh, it's the same dynamic. But the thing that I was getting was, Kevin, I was astonished 
later. <laughs> to, I just assume like, well, Phil, so is this a character Phil had done at the Groundlings or something? And and Kevin decided, hey, I have an idea for your Mace character for this piece. And and Phil just said, oh, no, I just, no, Kevin yeah. just wrote the script and I was just interpreting I thought he it. did a character named Mace here, no? no. Did he? Mace no, was one of them so. after a few so. times. But then he is talented. But, you know, <laughs> but that was a perfect, that was a perfect Phil character. Uh, I mean, that I, is so I used, perfect. I used yeah. to sit, you know, Phil would sit right next to me. Right I would there. sit, yeah, I mean, I, me and Lawrence had to have the table and Phil would, I don't know why, but maybe the writing credits, I think he sat right, <laughs> right at the right hand up at the table. And so he's doing that character right next to me. And there was something about, it was like, you know, like kind of like accordion kind of that kind of energy that comes. Out. I mean, it was you couldn't sit, just sit and you know quietly no. poker face that thing. It was, um, but I, I strongly urge people to try to find it online. It should be. Um, I have a copy at home if anybody wants to see it. <laughs> You know, Kevin, you, you did a sketch I thought was very funny once. And Please, it's not about me. It. Well, Phil, <laughs> Phil was in it. Yeah. So maybe it was uh, Julie or Victoria, but um, it was Waiters Without a Pad. And, and for him oh, yeah, to be... Oh, it was be, not me. For him to be... But I love that one. Kevin was the funny one in it. But Phil, <laughs> underplaying his part, is oh, always yeah. sells the, the mm -hmm. other side of the sketch. And it's, it's very hard to do. And then he's... You're getting twice the laughs because you get a laugh and then he gets his reaction. He was so it's good funny. at that. He totally understood what, what you were going for in the sketch and what was needed from him and how he could elevate the sketch. We were just talking about that that piece yeah. earlier. And oh, really? I bet you remember this moment in the piece where <laughs> it's Phil is, Kevin has shown up, he's super smooth and, and it's an elegant restaurant. He's taking these complicated orders. <laughs> and at one point, so he says, aren't you going to write any of this down? <laughs> oh no, that won't be necessary. <laughs> and so, and so, so uh, Kevin leaves and, 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 and Phil's like, uh, one one of the guests is wow that's really impressive that he can mem memorize all those complicated Stupid. orders and it's like listen he's he's a professional at his job and I'll tell you something else bet he makes a damn good living at it <laughs> <laughs> I just do you remember that yeah. line the, the reading on it makes a damn good living let me don't don't kid yourself that guy he's sharp. <laughs> So and, he never writes then, it down. He gets it wrong every single time. But, but the joke, the joke, yeah. like a typical joke in the piece is like, um, um, mm -hmm. it's like, um, would you like to start off with a drink? And it's like, so people are giving very specific, very memorable <laughs> drinks. Like, yes, I like a vodka martini right. with just a little bit of vermouth. Got and it, I want some it. Angostura mm -hmm. bitters. Nice and, the, and then, <laughs> very nice. And then, yeah, yeah, this, so that. Kevin's <laughs> approving. <laughs> And then I do absolutely. It, it's with, then, <laughs> absolutely. And then like uh, I'd like a, just a white wine, simple white wine, glass of wine. Oh, okay, Chardonnay, that'd be excellent. And so, and then, um, <laughs> and then Kevin comes back. So they talk about how brilliant Kevin must be, and then he comes back. I'm here with the drinks, the um, cream de cassis Red for Bull, the lady, the yeah. Red Bull, Red and Bull. Coke for the gentleman, <laughs> the. Um, Diet you who for the lady <laughs> and for the gentleman a creme de cassis. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's not what I ordered. Uh, oh, it's like, really? really? <laughs> but anyway, that was, hmm. so it's Kevin's refusal yeah. to write anything down. My sketches seem to escalate with the same premise, just more and more, you know, until it got so absurd. I remember the last order I took. Well, I don't remember it, but um, the last bit was I would go off with their order. No, I swear to God, I'll get it right this time. I know exactly what you want. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, don't worry about it at all. And uh, and I leave, and then uh, Phil's uh, phone rings, and he picks it up, and then you cut to me I'm by the kitchen. I'm sorry, once again, that was the tuna tartare <laughs> and the um, <laughs> meatloaf. <laughs> no, why don't you just write it down? <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, one of the nicest things you were, Dave, you were talking about Phil's contribution. Yeah. It's at one point, Feels like, um, I think I'll give. I'm happy to give you the order again, <laughs> but this time, I think you might want to write it down. <laughs> and Kevin's like, "No, sir, that won't be necessary." Friend, friend, yeah. <laughs> friend is the one. That's, yeah. right. That's right. Friend. Listen, friend. friend. Uh, Listen, friend. Yeah. He's quietly stewing, and he's getting it's boiling. And over. that was with Rosie. Um, Oh, Rose. Rosie O'Donnell, no? No, that was with the, who's the, she had a talk show? Rosanna. Rosie, Rosie O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. 
<laughs> Who Listen. I was dating at the time. I remember. <clears throat> but what else did I do that was funny? Yeah. Um, Kevin, I know one of yours that is thematic to this. I don't know if it got on air, but I, it always stuck in my head. It was the, the boxer who's really scared. He's about, he's in the he's backstage and he keeps getting phone calls from people asking where to park oh, and how yeah. to get tickets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always thought that was a, Jim yeah, that was a, premise. That was a, uh, a very common thing on SNL. You spent more time trying to get your friends in, make sure they had their tickets and they had parking and, you know, um, whatever. Where do you, and, where do you and go? When you should be working on your lines and remembering things and, you know, talking to wardrobe or whatever. It's okay. The tickets should be down there. They're not down there? Did you check with the usher? Yeah, the guy on the side. Um, no, I got nothing to do. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So that was the yeah, I thought. I was doing a, a gig, uh, doing stand up just two weeks ago. And I'm at a restaurant, and sometimes you see the people at the restaurant when they're coming to the uh, sold out theater or whatever it is. So, <laughs> well, whatever. It doesn't, it, doesn't even matter. it doesn't matter. Go to Ticketmaster. <laughs> so, these, this, this table full of like seven is sitting there, and a the guy goes, Spitter, I'll come to your show tonight. I go, All right. And then, uh, <laughs> and then he goes, I guess if you're here, then the show hasn't started. I say, yeah, okay. So, we, we go through those, and then, um, <laughs> And then I get up to go, and I go, hey, all right, here we go. And he goes, hey, we're going to be a while. Can you tell him to keep seven open? I go, me? <laughs> <laughs> I go, so I got to go over there and like lay across seven seats until you come Damn. over. Yeah, that's my job now. Anyway. Do you remember when we would do the, um, the sketch pitch ideas on Monday uh, yeah. afternoon at oh, Warren's yeah. office. Yeah. It was so small. You could, there was like, I don't know, how many of us with Jim and everybody and Al Frank, and we could barely fit in there, but Lauren insisted that we do in his <laughs> office. And his desk took up like half of the office. Yeah. <laughs> and we just all sit around cramped in there and each, we go around the room and Lauren would point and you go, uh, David, what do you have? Yeah. Uh, and you tell your idea, Dana. And then it would go around and Phil would always be so quiet in those things. And I don't know if... Uh, if he, I don't think he pitched an Did idea pitch? much. Yeah, I don't remember. And then Lauren, I guess he had talked to Lauren uh, privately about his idea or whatever, but he didn't have to pitch because he was always in everything. Yeah. You know? yeah. But didn't you guys do fake pitches? Because like, if you did a really good pitch on Monday, then it was Jim goes on Wednesday. Jim had so to decide, a, decide which ones were bullshit when you go, Schneider's like, caveman afraid of caves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks, she'd yeah. play the caveman. And, uh, and I did the same pitch. I remember pitching to Christopher Walken uh, and maybe Harvey Keitel too, different shows. I said, my idea is this, Lauren. Um, it's a runaway truck stop, you know, gravel mm -hmm. on a steep hill. And there's a um, bar at the end of it. <laughs> and I'm the bartender. And Walken comes in. Everybody comes in rattled, you know. And then, you know, it just it writes itself after that. But, you know. <laughs> Right. I, think, I like it writes itself. Right. So I would pitch that like, you know, all year and every time we're yeah. they, they were. I should explain it to the audience that that the you know the show we gather. You have to have some kind of opening gun to signify. Okay, we're you know we we have to start doing the show. And that would be like Monday evening at like. They became later and later over the years, but they were supposed to be around like five or six o'clock. <laughs> and like, as Kevin said, they, everyone crammed into Lauren's capacious, but not for like 30 people size office. And so people would be like sitting each other's laps. There'd be like 12 people on a single couch there. And then I had a chair in the, cause I was the head writer producer. And then the host had a chair and we were sort of you know, the, angle. At a and the cast, angle uh, the facing Lauren's desk. cast sat on the floor. And then they would go around and Laura would go, you know, Al, um, <laughs> and Al Frank would did the same joke for like, oh, which right. we all, which would like, um, he'd go like, um, you know, you know, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this week, you know, Buck Henry, <sighs> next week, Steve Martin, <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Just that, to that was, oh, I remember that. Anyway, yeah. But um, <laughs> the the, um, the most famous thing he from I remember from any host meeting was you know he would go through and then he'd finally ask the host like uh, Steve did, did you have anything you wanted to do and um, and it was Chris Walken 
it was the first time he hosted and um, oh, yeah. we, we didn't really know, you know, exactly what he's going to be like. Well, he just sat and stared out the window. He didn't even look at us. He was <laughs> but, but, he, but his line, he said those, uh, Chris, did you, anything you wanted to suggest? Ape suits are funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. No, no. He said, he said, Bear. ape suits are funny. Bears as well. No. Yes, that right. was what he said. No, he, he, I, well, I don't know. The way I remember, he said, uh, bear suits are funny. <laughs> And Bez as well. <laughs> so for an hour, okay. he processed that thought. <laughs> Bez suits are funny, and Bez as well. No, it's I, think, I think it was more like this. Bez suits <laughs> are funny. <laughs> and but you know what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's what happened with that, I think. If I remember correctly, <laughs> the Russian circus was playing at Radio City Music Hall across the street. And I think I remember that. And I said, maybe it'd be funny if... Uh, you know, we uh, we did something with that because they have bears over there and stuff, and maybe some bears. Says, Bath suits are funny, you know? <laughs> but I could be wrong about that. <laughs> did he host? I... He hosted, right? <laughs> yeah, he said bear yeah. suits are funny, <laughs> and maybe a Wayne's World. <laughs> Actually, that week that he was on, I got a cat from him. We started, he, yes. Cat suits are funny, too. A, no, yeah. and I went to his apartment up on the Upper apartment. West Side. We started talking about cats, and he had a cat that had some kittens. And I was living with a couple in Brooklyn, and they wanted another cat. And also, we're big fans of Christopher Walken. And then he said, well, you know, I can't do him, but it was like, come over and I will give you the cat. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay. Oh, and so fun. then I went up there and his wife is the casting director, right? Um, Georgiana Wal Walken. Anyway, she let me in and then I sat in the living room waiting. It was like this townhouse. And then he came in and said, you've come to get the cat. And I said, yeah. And he goes, I want to, I, can, oh, I wish I could do him. But it sounds he goes, just like I, him. Yeah, I thought it was him. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm terrible with that. But anyway, he said, this cat is the most, the father of this cat is, he died from fucking. <laughs> I said, he did? And he said, he got cat AIDS. <laughs> because he was such, he loved to fuck. <laughs> he loved to fuck this cat. And I said, oh, and there was this cat. That's nice. That was that from this cat. Like and he Chris. said, do you want to see a picture of the father of the cat? And I said, yes. And then he laughed and he came back with like an eight by 10 of a cat. And he was like, cat here is the father of the cat you're getting. This cat couldn't stop fucking. He fucked and fucked. And the cat you're getting is, she was sired by this cat. Yeah. Uh, love it. I like that impression. I wrote a sketch uh, with me and Walken, and, and uh, you know, it was at the end of the show, <laughs> as usual. And um, wow. uh, hmm. it was we, we, it had two things going on at the same time. And Lauren came up uh, to me. And he goes, uh, you know, you got two different kind of things coming out. I think you need to lose one and have. Uh, you know, lose uh, lose Walkins thing, and you go tell him tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> Jim, Jim and I were thinking. Uh, Jim, you were thinking, yeah. and um, <clears throat> so I told him, and I said, and he said, I I don't know what the, um, you know, w why that would happen, and you know what is the best way. We'll talk about it tomorrow. You know, and I don't see him for like three days, and then he comes up to me. It's like. Like we never stopped talking. It goes right into the middle of the conversation again. Because, you know, I'm not sure if uh, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> it's like if he went back to his uh, kindergarten, you know, uh, kindergarten reunion. No, I just thought that you were grading on a curve. You know, I didn't know that you were. Uh... <laughs> and he smelled like garlic all the time. Mm. Which is good. That's healthy. You know what uh, Phil sketch I like? Not to bring it back to Phil, but um, <laughs> Phil was there. The one where he was dancing with Jan Hooks. Oh, the best! The best! So touching. Love is a dream. Oh, love is a dream. Uh, well, come here. Love is a dream. Who wrote please. that, Downey? Tom Schiller. 
Oh, Schiller Vision? Yeah, it was a Schiller. Yeah. That was a oh, movie. yeah. It was a yeah. short Schiller film. Schiller Vision, while we were screwing film. around. They had a, they, uh, one of those little Schiller Visions. This is, I, I have a bad neck, you know. And one of the reasons I figured out is because huh. in one of the things, it wasn't Julia, I don't think. We were at Central Park and we were paying off a joke where they dropped a bomb somewhere and then two older people are walking wearing old makeup and then they drop a bomb and it hits me on the head. So it's like way later, years later. And so mm. he's above me with a ladder and he's, he goes, this is a fake bomb. It's okay. Like, I think it's a real bomb. I didn't think it was a real bomb. I just thought it was something heavy. And I go, and you're dropping it really on my head? And he goes, yeah, it'll be fine. And I'm new, so I don't want to say anything. Drops this thing on me, <laughs> cracks my neck. I'm like, oh my God, concussion protocol. Another take, another take, another take. It hurt so bad. It was jamming me like a turtle down. And then I go, is this man out of balsa wood? He's like, no, like steel, iron, and uh, kettlebells glued together. It was so heavy. Mm. And there was no thought about it. And then I walked down there going, I wonder if I'll have neck problems for the rest of my life. And, uh, and have you? Ooh. Yes. When Jan died and they played that at the end of the show, mm -hmm. oh, I was such too a mess. Much, too much. Yeah. Way to bring the show down, Julia. <laughs> well, no, because two no, of really the greatest, not, no, funniest, yeah. most they wonderful were, people they were, together. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. so fabulous together. And it, mm -hmm. was, it was the fact that, that, that Schiller just decided to cast those two. I mean, the... You know, I, I mean, it, it is an amazing thing to, to look at. It, it hits you. It, it not, kind of knocked me for a loop, too. I, I just know. feel so sad that we didn't get to know what Phil's career would have been. Mm. Like, I would have really enjoyed. Would have been busy. Yeah. yeah. He was, you know, that one where he gives Farley a hug at the end. I think it's when Chris left. What was that the mm. very end of the show? Do you remember that, Jim? Oh, mm. yeah. It, it was. When Phil's last show? Was, was Phil's, Phil's last show or Chris's? Yeah, I guess. No, it was Chris's, I think. Chris's last show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right, Julia. Because everyone I, was talking about Chris leaving, and I was going, I'm also leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, let's get a close up of that. <laughs> you get in there. It's like, I'm also leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Julia's like, no tears, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> We can do this. Mm. Yeah, I always wonder about uh, the career Phil would have had, too, yeah. if he went on. I mean, uh, certainly Tom Cruise wouldn't be where he is right now. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, it sounds funny, but Phil would have been someone to parachute out of an airplane <laughs> and hang off things, you know, because of all yeah. his hobbies. And, yeah. mm -hmm. hey, he could have been a good uh, Walter White from Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. yeah I think he could have. I think he had it in him to really yeah. do some. You think I'm kidding around with you? No, I'm not kidding around with you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> if you're smart, you'll be smart. Jim, you were saying something. No, saying? I was. I was just saying. It probably, I, I never know um, uh, um, what what strikes me as like some hot piece of news. Everyone in their eyes, like, oh, idiot. Yeah, we we've known that. <laughs> I mean, I was um, I was always told, and by people who claimed it, no, that Phil used to do looping for Jack Nicholson. Oh, oh yeah, he did. Yeah, when um, because Nicholson did. apparently got so lazy. He didn't even want to go in and, right. and, and re record like a simple voiceover. But and that, that Phil would come in and do it. Yeah, because... yeah, actually, that's one of the first things he showed me is his. Oh, okay. For so a yeah, no, right. he really did it. Yeah. For the movie The Border, I believe. Yeah. Can I tell a short story? That yeah. is, is this? So I'm at a part we three. We do have the clip coming up. So. Oh, do we have the clip? <laughs> I'm at a par three in Studio City with John Lovitz and Phil Hartman. So we're, we wait and then we wave on the next golfer and it's Nicholson and he hits it out of bounds and hits a car. Anyway, so then he's coming up to us and Phil was very, just a gentleman and goes, Mis you know, Mr. Nicholson, I just want to say that I actually dubbed your voice for the movie The Border. And Jack Nicholson said, no wonder it was my only stinker. <laughs> Well, it was you funny. mean as it was a, a joke. bike to be funny? <laughs> it was a joke, and then we couldn't find John because he just got attached to, to Jack Nicholson. We're like, Where's John? We can't see off. He went up his ass. And how do you do it? Is it the method, or what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm going to follow you home. <laughs> Don't worry. He's one of my best friends. We talked today. He knows how I teach him. All right. Any, um, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? I remember one time um, I, I did a movie with Sandler uh, called oh. Anger Management. A couple of people remember? Okay. Nicholson. Anyway, I played a lawyer and Nicholson was uh, in the scene. It was a courtroom. And, um, 
and I'm doing you know the scene as a lawyer, just throwing a tennis ball at somebody or something. And then uh, Sandler told me that Nicholson came up to him uh, like a year later, and he goes, "How's that lawyer friend of yours doing?" <laughs> it's like he thought I was a real lawyer. <laughs> it's called acting. Acting. That's how good. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> But so, um, you're to, wrapping up the whole Phil thing? To yeah. sum up, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We've done a lot of we're, Zooms, which is going to be a two-part, two-parter. Yeah. And, um, two-part episode. We've just uh, shined a light on Phil's greatness. And uh, Jim, anything just, else you're looking we, at there? We love him and we miss him. Well, I always so love you're still reading that tiny piece of paper? <laughs> well, it, it's, remind, it's reminding me of, of, of things. I mean, um, I, I was, I, his... Um, the best use of Jesus ever on the show was oh, yeah. the receptionist. The receptionist, uh, yeah. Like, and this is about... Yeah, and this is um, regarding, yeah. And, that, and Phil, Phil... And by the way, Phil was, apart from a lot of other things, he was very devout Catholic. And in a surprise, to a surprising degree, I remember... He and I'm not. Julia, this is a, a criticism, <laughs> but, I'm but he, to hear this. I never knew that but he was. He, oh, he, he was, got very he upset very when Sinead O'Connor ripped up he, the. He yeah. got was? upset, mm -hmm. especially Who we had it? written. We had, <laughs> the, Pope, the Pope didn't care. I I know him. So go ahead. He was fine with it, um, but no, I remember. I remember Phil kind of shocking us. It was Al and I had written something for. A debate piece where he was playing David Brinkley, and and it, it wasn't an important thing in the scheme of things, but it was just sort of surprising that, and he had never obje had objected to anything before. Um, but it was about, um, remember, I don't know for those old enough to remember David Brinkley, he used to do editorials <laughs> uh, as part of the news, and and his thing was he was kind of a sour kind of seen it all kind of right david that, that brinkley thing. yeah he just sounded weird and, but he he just but he was supposed to it was is is what was entertaining about him was he was so cynical but so it was just him commenting it's like peter jennings played by tom hanks turning to um to david brinkley for commentary and it was just like it, it ended up in this thing about you know uh, you know, life is just, you know, this awful um, uh, veil of misery and it ends with we're food for worms, you know. And Phil all practically refused to do it, not because it wasn't funny. It wasn't particularly funny, actually, as it happens, but it was, <laughs> it's just that he just found it really upsetting the way it dealt with you know the the view of life or something, and it was it was religious. His objection to it was religious, and I never, I mean, you know, it's like when he told me, and maybe you guys know this. Um, when I was in college, I was a big fan of a group called Poco, which was formed out of uh, Buffalo Springfield, one of an offshoot, and Phil designed their album yeah. covers. Mm -hmm. In an earlier career, he was a graphic designer, and I actually totally remembered the cover of the album he described. He goes, it's it's a thing with a cabinet where you're mm -hmm. seeing a collection of curious. And I go, yeah, I know it. There's like a seashell and a thing. Go, yeah, that's the one. My, Phil, my wife went to see America a couple of weeks ago and uh, I didn't go. And uh, <laughs> I, I was- I was should have gone. I was doing something. You're riding a horse with no name? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so and I that's got. what I said. I said, you know, Phil Hartman designed the cover for America that famous album with the three of them in the front she didn't oh, know i didn't know that well yeah. she's 30 years younger than me so she didn't know <laughs> no she um but it was you no know, cool. she does things with you that she doesn't want to do particularly <laughs> <laughs> seems, <laughs> seems to me true. once in a while that is true I know, that, that is true no i just had surgery so i couldn't uh i couldn't walk actually <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that, that makes part. sense. But I just want to say Phil had such an incredible design sense. Like his the way his house looked, like like how mm -hmm. things were designed or how, what the colors were on the wall. Like he really office too. He was great with that. Like yeah. he had so many sides to him that his office was the most tidiest office I know. ever. <laughs> right. I mean, you walk in there and Dennis Miller's too. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Dennis. No. <laughs> Close. Sorry. But I remember Sorry. going to Phil's Hart Hartman's house the first time here, 
And he just had one chair in front of the living room, only had one chair in it and a TV. I was like, so you never have anyone over? Like, it was just one <laughs> yeah. chair. Anyway, it was so, but it was beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. it was so specifically designed just for his. Are there any clips of Phil we haven't seen that they have? No, I mean, I besides I that so. one. 27 of them. I don't think we, I think we showed them all. Mm-hmm. Well, for the Those are all part. the sketches he did? Well, I'm. <laughs> Unfrozen Caveman is probably the most famous. Yeah. Writer. Yeah. I mean, so uh, Jack, Jack Handy, yeah. went to, for my money, the best writer, uh, writer, writer uh, uh, ever in the show, was, was um, had a special, um, <laughs> he had a special connection with Phil. And, and he just, um, he's the one who created Unfrozen Caveman Lawyer and, and, um, um, that uh, he Tunes wrote is. Yeah. Tunes is, but he also wrote the um the chef he one? wrote the the charlton yeah. heston soylent green oh yeah remember uh, the yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the he had a great charlton heston yeah he, that was one of the fun what was the chef did. he did that uh, anal retentive that was bonnie and terry turner that was so They're, good those are funny mm-hmm. as hell and the peter graves thing phil wrote that that was a no, piece he actually really? wrote yeah mm-hmm. hmm. what about the acting teacher that goes, you're here, you're not here. What is it? This is something, yeah, this, is something. Nothing. No. this is nothing. <laughs> this is something, this is nothing. When I he was hosted. told it was based on an actual acting teacher. It's when he hosted. Yeah. Oh, when hosted. he hosted I have to with, during that, Chris yeah. Kattan, Will Ferrell. This is, this is nothing. This is yeah. <laughs> so funny. I How did it go it. again? I just saw it the other day. <laughs> it's nothing. So this was nothing or something? This side? <laughs> This one something. That's something. This, this is, nothing. is nothing. And that's okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This makes right. sense to me. You'd have to see it. <laughs> but um, well, we're gonna take a short break, and, and uh, we won't be back. back. <laughs> that's I how remember. We, that's uh, how we ended. This is one last uh, funny bit. Uh, <laughs> Any plugs? Whenever I would come into um, Thirty Rock, and I see Phil getting off the elevator, we would talk like we were two advertising executives, every time. It was just like our way of greeting each other. Ted, how you doing, Ted? I'm doing well, Ted. Hey, it's, uh, Trudy's up in uh, R&D. Why don't you go on up there and tell her we need some uh, AR down for this Colgate. Uh, I'll do that, I'll do that, Walter. Uh, um, otherwise, we'll see you down tomorrow at the uh, Squasset meeting. You know, <laughs> it's just stupid stuff like that. And um, it's got no real ending to this, but yeah. uh, it's, it's a good thing strong start. Strong start. Start. memory. That. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when Downey get mad if you go, uh, hand me that Johnson file. <laughs> like yeah. if you made it too corny in a sketch, you had to make it more oh, specific. Yeah. yeah. I like to have a way we finish like big. Know me. We're finishing big. I like that. We're finishing big. This is called a fizzle ending. Uh, <laughs> we have fizzle, editing capabilities. Fizzle ending. This will be, no one will ever see this part. To okay. fill, the, one last question. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize me. Just it's, die uh, in the vine, my like, guy. We're just there's a, se- there's a second show. No, 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 Huh? Jingle all the way? Jingle all the way. He mm-hmm. would have worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. He would have been nonstop working. Oh, yeah. And the, when live streaming came, he couldn't, I mean, he could have done like 10 shows at once with his range. <laughs> and one last thing. Something and nothing. Yeah. No. <laughs> nothing. This is something. That's this something. is nothing. Okay. No. Uh, they should be rolling the credits at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, then well, we're going to read a couple goodbye. ads for Instacart what? right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do some live ads. Menscape is you know, what what class. was Madonna book on tape? It that was the third one. It took you that long to get <laughs> He's looking it's at a this post-it tiny. that is two inches. Madonna, what does it say? I didn't remember the Madonna. Madonna. The staff left 20 minutes ago. I mean, I don't, know. I don't think anyone's really back there. Is Madonna on book on tape? This turns out here. Chipotle is. Text by Madonna, text by Charlton Heston, page 63. I like my vagina. <laughs> Sometimes I stare at it in the mirror when I'm undressing and wonder what it would look like without any hair. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. 
Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 